Hello friends, and welcome to a new series. Today, we're going to start working on learning more about Path of Exile. So, I, have, I, I got this game a long time ago. I picked it up. You help us. And, and I didn't really do much with it. Uh, I didn't understand it. I didn't. It is very complicated and on the surface. Um, this is your skill tree. Are you intimidated yet? Don't be. Everything makes sense from a certain point of view once you get into it. So what we're going to do is we are going to play a totem marauder class which takes us down here to where we start out in the marauder tree which marauders start right there and we head down here we get some armor we go around more armor well, lots of armor for a caster class um, and these things all mean something we're going to explore them more as we go. Uh, I know a lot of the people who watch my videos are not as familiar with Path of Exile, so I'm going to kind of, since we're already made some progress, I'm not going to go over any of these skills just yet. Uh, I'm not doing this for the, the, the pros of Path of Exile, the guys who've been playing forever, even though if you enjoy watching me play, by all means, watch me play. Uh, you can give me tips, you can give me hints, you can give me ideas. I am very happy with that. Uh, this will be our first playthrough, and we're currently playing in the Breach League. So, this is the one that started at the beginning of uh, December. And uh, we're going to continue this, and this is going to kind of be our irregular, erratic. Uh, let's learn how to play this so that next season comes we can be competitive. Because we're not, we're not making the progress that a lot of people are. Uh, and the main reason we're not, make, not making progress is because I don't play it every day, and I don't play it as much, and I don't understand the game fully. So we're going to learn it together. We're going to figure out what works, what doesn't work, and what we're going to do now is we're going to look and we're going to see where our quests are going. So we're looking at the waypoint, and you can look at this many different ways, but. I'm still learning the keys. Uh, we're going to look at what quests we currently have. We are currently in Act 2 of Cruel. And we're doing pretty okay. So, we're coming into this in about the middle. I, I wasn't really sure that it was going to work well. And I didn't think I had enough game concept knowledge to start making videos. Until I'd already made it through the first act animated into the second act. And then I'm realizing this game is very much like Diablo. Uh, I know a lot of people hate that comparison, but if you're going to compare it to a game, I'm not saying it's exactly like Diablo, so don't don't get all worked up about it if you're one of those people who hate saying that this is like Diablo. It's like Diablo in the fact that it is a, an ARPG. It's a top-down view. You, you do things, you have skills, you kill stuff, but it is so much more than Diablo ever was. This is this is the game that Diablo 3 probably should have been and wasn't. So you if you liked Diablo, probably want to check this out. Uh, there's an almost unlimited number of classes you can play of different varying levels of, of uh, success. And uh, there are uh, almost an unlimited number of opportunities so we've got some quests to do. First, we got to deal with these bandits. We haven't dealt with any of them yet. So we're going to go out into the riverways. And we're going to look for these exits, which we have not found yet. And when we do so, we're going to start doing some combat. Remember, this is we've already finished one round through. So we've gone from the beginning to the end. And like in Diablo, we started over and we upgraded the difficulty. So now we're in Cruel. We're doing this as a self-found because, well, honestly, trading in this game is very intimidating and I have not really been able to understand it yet. 
So we have our skill set up. Our left mouse button sets us for move, and our right mouse button fires up our totems. And our totems are our means of attack. As you can see, these little critters come running right into it. And pretty much just get annihilated. Now we're probably over leveled for this zone. Now I have a skill that allows me to do two totems. Normally you would only have be able to do one. I'm also running blood magic, which means I have no mana. My spells use my health pool to cast. I'm also running a very aggressive loot filter because the amount of items that can drop in this game is extreme. As you can see, we are fairly effective at doing damage. We can handle ourselves pretty well. We could take a hit, too. That was what led me to this class. I tried uh, an assassin, or shadow, I think they're called, and it didn't get it for me. Just wasn't putting out the... Uh, wasn't putting out what, what I wanted it to be. So... I, I'm sure I screwed up the build, and that was more it than anything. It wasn't that the class is bad. I was just bad, because it was my first class. And honestly, your first character, you can probably expect them to kind of kind of suck. Uh, I made another character, a ranger, and honestly, in games like this, I tend to really enjoy um, ranged classes and do fairly well with them well I can't clear half the content at many levels higher than I can on this uh, this guy here so we're, we're gonna push through and what I like about this is that there's a very, very competitive nature to the game. They do um, a lot of races, like where you uh, you try to get to a certain point, like finish Act Three in a couple of hours, or any number of other things that they set you up. Well, these guys must be pretty heavy duty. So, um, like you tried to, uh, basically finish the game in two hours, or finish Act 1 in two hours from start. Well, I can't say where I'm in good shape to do that yet. I don't understand a lot of the game as well as some of the people who actually do those runs. But we're learning every day. Now, for those of you who are not as familiar with the game, I'm sorry I don't know it better. I can't really sit down and explain a basic what you need to know. So we're just gonna play it and we're gonna enjoy playing the game. And if you see something you like, this game is free to play on Steam, so no commitment on your part for money. You can try it out yourself, but like I said, be prepared that your first character is probably going to get annihilated regularly because you're not going to understand how the skill system works. You're not going to understand a lot of things. And we're almost ready to make a level, so I can kind of show you what my intentions are. in my skill tree and where I plan to go but we got almost 2,000 health at like mid-level so we're gonna end up with like five six thousand health in the end probably or more due to gear 
And um, this little white part that comes up is our shield. You'll see that start to recover as soon as we kill this. This is our shield. So we got 41 points for shield that also absorb damage before our health absorbs damage. Or there are certain things that bypass the shield. Uh, cast damage, I guess, is one of those things. Uh, and by all means, if I'm saying things that are incorrect, if one of you guys is a more experienced player or knows more, please correct me. Because I'm doing all the research that I can, because I'm having fun with this game. However, I'm not... I'm not an expert. And this puts me at a kind of a disadvantage, but not much of one. What we're trying to do is, is just learn the game. And we're going to learn it together. I've figured out some things by playing it. Just hanging around and, and seeing what works and what doesn't work. But Generally, if you've played any of the Diablo games, you have a you have a good idea how the movement works. You have a good idea of skills and how the flasks work. Although there are some differences in how the flasks work in this game. As you can see here, we have one skill point available that we can spend. And when we get a little bit more progress, we're gonna we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about why we're taking the tree that we're taking. As you can see as a basically a caster we're pretty tanky even though we are a bit over the level for the zone I like the safety of it for a new player and for those of you who are experienced players I'm not going to uh, post my tree because it's it's probably terrible and uh, not only that, but it's a totem marauder, so uh, if you're an experienced player, you pretty much know how to make a totem marauder. If you're not an experienced player, you'll, you'll see it's not hard to uh, put it together. You just pick all the things that have to do with strength and armor and totem and kind of rock and roll with it. Totem placement is less important because they're 360 degree rotational. They will follow the target. They might not follow the target you want, but they will follow the target. You just need to get them close enough so the fire hits. And honestly, it, it hits from pretty far away, so it's not like you're having a serious range issue with these things. They don't have to be right up on it. And like any game like this, what I do is I I move forward, I crisscross the zone, I come back. So we'll put one there, over one over here. As you can see, it's pulling from back here, going all the way out to here. So we've got some range on these things. And they do hurt. Especially when you've got them specced out to where this is what you're trying to do. My problem with the ranger that I started is I tried to do one of the builds off of one of the POE build sites for ranger because I was having problems and I wasn't doing the damage I wanted and I didn't understand how to do damage and the build that I picked is so gear dependent and so dependent on skills that I don't have that I basically can't do much of anything. I've got to be 20 levels higher than the content to do the content. And even then, it's still a chore. Now, this open world stuff is, is pretty... Uh, pretty easy to run down with this guy 
the dungeons, if you're doing something closer to your level, when we get to Act 3 again, it'll be a little bit more challenging. Right now it's not. And my loot filter is... Uh, I guess there's nothing to see. Uh, maybe we'll find something that's going to drop a bunch of loot here soon. But this is about as high as the graphics can go, so you're not going to be... Oh, here we go. This guy should uh, drop some stuff. These guys. When it's all said and done. Alright, so you can see we got a life flask and some boots. But if I show everything all these are the all the other things but they're pretty worthless so they don't show up for us because they're filtered um, there is a point in the game and I've been through some of it already where it will basically flood the entire screen with gear so what do you do at that point you uh, have so much loot on the screen at one shot you can't see anything anymore. That's why they, they have these really nice loot filters that hide all the trash. Because this game will massively put you under for storage. So the key point in this is you don't actually pick a class. You pick a basic class, like a, a platform uh, framework for what you want to put, what you want to build into. So you can make a like a caster that uses a bow. You can you can do anything in the skill tree that you want, as long as you wind up with enough points to wander your way over there. So you know. Marauders start here, archers start over here, casters start up here, and they start out with their primary intellect things. Here's the intelligence, so this is where the casters start, because they start with intelligence. So if I want to cast more spells, I can work my way up into here and swoop down and pick up these intelligence nodes and get these going. Uh, if I want to build a bow character, I can zip over here to where the bow starts becoming a thing. Uh, I think it's over here. Yeah, bow damage and attack speed. So I can zip over here and grab this and build a bow character. And that's cool too. I mean, I have a lot of options. And then once you get going really well, you can do some... Uh, Ascensions, which we're going to have to do sometime soon once we get to Act 3, and we can uh, gain even more points. And these points are significant. They make a huge difference in how your template performs, which is one of the problems why my Ranger is not working, because I cannot get my Ranger through the Ascension, because so I don't do enough damage. These little pieces I'm picking up will upgrade your gear. They're like crafting materials. And they're all they're basically called currency. So when you do trading, that's what you trade. And like I said, I'm not too worried about getting mobbed. doesn't really... I, they can kill me. It just takes them a while. So I have a lot of regeneration. I have a lot of health. I have a lot of armor. And it has pros and cons. I mean, my health is what casts my spells, so I have to make sure I maintain health. Otherwise, I can easily 
get dead fast. Because as you're taking damage, if what you're taking damage in is what you're using to cast your spells with, and you're really, really low on health, well, you can't cast any spells either, so you, you're, you're totally screwed. Like, all around screwed. These are pretty simple, general maps. This is the big picture. Ooh, nope, that's not the big picture. This is basically what the zone looks like. They're fairly big zones. I mean, as you can see, we've been wandering through this for a while. So we've got we've got some places to go and some things to see and I don't know if we can get over there. Doesn't look like it. Looks like it might be too far. Or just out of the bounds. Yeah, it's probably out of bounds. It is. So we can go to the wetlands because we do have to deal with ba with bandits in the wetlands. So we need to go there anyway. And this is a uh, a little bit further away from the starting city, so it's a little bit higher level. So it will present a little bit more of a challenge. But honestly, we should be in Act 3 by now. Uh, these guys with the blue are higher level. They're harder. They're, they're like champion mobs. So they... They do a little more damage. They have more special abilities. So here's some more of them. They charge and they have reduced in elemental damage. Now, you'll see, all I do is elemental damage. Look at them resisting all that elemental damage. That is some serious resisting of elemental damage, isn't it? Wow, we could barely kill them. And the regular ones just have charges, basically. As you kill things, your flasks recharge, so if we get a good beat down, burn up our charges in our flask. I don't think I've found anything in any of those yet. So let's, let's let these guys beat us up a little bit. Let's use some of our flask before we do anything. See, it fills right back up as they die. So... Not really a horrible thing. You don't have to go back to town to refill them. You don't have to buy bandages. You don't have to do any of that stuff. All I gotta do is kill more stuff. And you get more points. And basically I, I, I found a, a kind of a template idea concept for this build. And I like it because the gear does not matter as much. The... Alright, so I found one of the quest things we need to do. And like in Diablo. And I apologize for all the times I'm going to say like in Diablo to all the people who hate the comparisons between Diablo and this game. But there are a lot of similarities and I don't care how adamant you are that there are different games. You do have to admit there are a lot of similar concepts that people can relate to and that's all I'm trying to do. Here's your waypoint out in the wild that will take you back to any one of these zones you want to go to. Because believe me, I am one of those people who, who really does not like to draw comparisons between two distinctly different games that obviously have a different viewpoint. I oh, can't kill that. On where things go. And that's that's definitely the case here. There, there's very different strategy very different methodology, very different...
concepts between this and Diablo. They are not the same game. They are very different. However, I'm not going to do that breach. I will, however, do this. This is a basically a cursed special area that shows up occasionally on your map. It's not guaranteed you're going to see it every time. These guys are more difficult. They have more mods on what happens when you go in, and I'll show you those when we go out. But usually there's more rewards for doing these than the regular zones. The goal is to make it to the end. Oh, look. A rare. That sounded like a very solid hit. Elder Sword. I'll I take cannot it. carry this. Alright, we can't carry it anyway. So when you get to the end, you can get a special version of a spell ability. Basically, it uses a different type of mechanic to cast those spells. But so far, none of those have actually done us any good. In the grand scheme of things, oh, we already reached the end. Oh, look. The power. And all we kind of do is run in circles around him if he's too hard. And since our lightning resist is not awesome, we're going to take the belt. I cannot carry this. Okay, we're not going to take the belt. My inventory is kind of a mess. We can, however, move that down there, and then we can take the belt. And we... We, from the vessel, we get another Sacrifice at Dawn, which is... I've been getting a lot of these, so... Where is it? Would have stacked it on the other one. Yeah, there it is. Sacrifice at Dusk. So basically, you can use these in your maps to upgrade them. And we'll get into maps later. I don't have any maps yet, because I'm not... 66. So I don't have any of those mods. Alright, so we're done here. That's all there is to it. <coughs> so, this one has a special effect of being a grounded narrow ravine of venom with 30% monster lightning resistance, monster poisons on hit, a 20% increase of quality of items found in this area. Now, these could show up with any number of different modifiers on them. It could be 30% resistance to fire. It could be uh, way different or way less mods. But, generally, with this character, I found them well worth doing, even if I can't use the item at the end right away. Because, I mean, really, we're level um, 49. I'm going to have to hold on to that for probably 20 levels. Because we won't really be able to make use of those until we're, like, level 70. So, is it worth it? Probably. Okay, so what we found here is we found our first bandit, who is Oak. And our turnaround this time is to kill all the bandits. So you strike me as someone who craves a higher purpose, something worthy. We have a choice. We can either help him by killing the other two bandits, because there's three bandits, or we can kill him and kill the other bandits, or kill him and help the other bandits. There's a lot of options we can have. But, we're pretty good with just killing him. Oh, 
And like I said, we're pretty tanky, so... My ranger was kind of all over the place. I could barely get a shot in. Totems allow me the opportunity to stay in one place. Cast a totem. I mean, if we want to optimize, we can place the totems in different places. That'll refill some of our flasks. But when he's near, we can cast him. It doesn't really do any mechanics that are going to cause us harm. And now we need to pick up his amulet. And that's pretty much the first bandit dead, so... Oh, his supporters are still coming after me. Alrighty, so... That's done. There is equipment that can allow you to call out one more portal. So this is a breach. And while I don't fully understand the mechanics of what they are or why they're here, basically, I'll go ahead and activate this one. Although there is a very high likelihood I will die. Uh, around the middle of Cruel, they actually start getting very, very hard. Like more difficult than I can even tank. You start getting bosses in here and higher levels. The more of them you kill, the longer the breach will stay open, the wider it will get, the more opportunity you have for treasure. And obviously we didn't keep it open long enough. So, Remember when I said that it'll fill your whole screen with treasure if you don't have a loot filter? This is what we got from the breach. In full. These are the things that are actually worthwhile as we're leveling up. Uh, obviously we gotta have something else in here that's junk. I pick up a lot of junk. My inventory is very full right now. Um, I probably don't need half of this stuff. I think I was intending to sell that. Yeah, probably was. Static Strike is not hard, so... I want these... more than anything. Uh, basically, as I understand it, they... Um, allow you to... create your own portal... that uh, is probably more significant than these. I know this other stuff really is of much use to us. But, hey, you got to see a little bit of a breach. Like I said, I personally don't understand what is causing them or why they are here. I don't know the lore behind it. Uh, doesn't mean I won't understand it. I just don't know if it's worth learning because I don't know if they're going to stay in the next league or if they're going to go away. Because this is divided up into leagues. Basically... Um, they run for about three months, and then another league starts, and then your characters... I uh, probably should have just portaled back. But whatever. More experience. Oh, no, there we go. We'll go back to town. And we'll go through some of my inventory, and we can have a moment to talk while I'm sorting. So... Vendors in this game are these Hello. few select NPCs you have around here. This one, this guy, uh, she is kind of a vendor. There's a guy over here, and there's a couple of masters that you meet. So if you want to purchase items, we can look at this, and these are what they have to purchase. And you use these currency items, these scraps and orbs and stuff to purchase things. You can see this costs one, the spiral wand costs one orb of transmutation. 
So I would have to have an orb of transmutation to buy it. I'd also have to be level 24 and have 83 intelligence. I don't have any of that, so I'm not going to get it. This one costs two scrolls of wisdom for a studded belt, which increases stun duration on enemies by 24%. Uh, we have some mana flasks that she's selling right now. Every level just kind of rotates. So when you make another level, this will, um, will rotate up. You'll get new stuff. The spells generally tend to stay the same as far as I've seen. But the equipment rotates up every level you make. And if you get overloaded on certain types of currency, like um, these all have a different use. I was trying to actually change how my items were linked together. See these little links? I'll explain that in a minute. But let's just, just assume that the links are good things. And I was trying to build on my Ranger a... A piece of gear was six slots. And I got the six slots and I was trying to link the six slots because only they were linked three and three, uh, which doesn't do me a whole lot of good. So these orbs of fusing reforge the links on between the sockets on an item. So you will, it'll change how these are linked up. Uh, with six slots, it would. It would reduce it so that there were none, and then it would add two, one here and one down here, and then it would change them so it was like this, and then this one didn't have any, and then it would add one down here and take one away up here. Um, I probably would have needed about 1,500 of them to get it set up the way I wanted. Just, just wasn't worth it. Um, because in the end, I'd already changed the, the colors of my slots the way I wanted them, and that took a significant amount of currency. Uh, and then when it came down to it, I just was not able to get the, uh, the links set between my gear. And we'll go over gear in a minute, but this is your stash. When you start out, you get four tabs. I don't need to carry all this stuff. I've got way more than what I need. Uh, these are currency items, these are skills, these are cards, divinity cards, these are gems, these are flasks, and I need to go through them probably pretty desperately. I can finally start casting that one. So we'll, uh, we'll pick it up and add it. There. Okay. So, one of the things that I had to do is I have a quest to find five unique items. And I have four. So I need one more unique item. And then I have to sell them. So I'm looking for one more unique item to sell. I could sell this goat's horn, but it's actually probably not helping me. It's exactly what I needed with the fire damage and uh, critical strike chance, which really doesn't matter much, but... Um, ignite duration and other things has seemed to work out fairly well. I don't know how much of this actually integrates into the actual build tree, but I have had fairly good luck with this goat's horn as a wand as opposed to some of the other wands that I've used. So I am keeping this one as long as I can. Uh, it's a level 44, I think just based on one of the spells I have in it. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the actual level to use is, but it's... Actually, it should tell me. 37-ish? I don't know. Um, but... We're going to hang on to it until we get something better. You can attack with a wand, but I'm not. It really doesn't seem to help, and honestly, we're not struggling. But this would be this could be my fifth one that I trade in when I find an upgrade. Uh, having a unique item for way too long is not necessarily a good thing I found. I had some uh, some rare items which are these yellow ones and some magic items which are the blue ones and s I don't think I have any other blue ones on me. I don't usually pick up blue ones anymore. Yep, yeah, here we go. There's a blue one. So this is a magic item and the other ones are normal items. 
So I had some of these uh, these rare items, and I, I kept them for a little bit longer than I should have because I didn't watch. I wasn't getting the stats that I wanted on some of the gear, and I was under the impression that if it was a a rare item, it was obviously better, and that's not always the case, uh, especially for this build because it doesn't matter so much what the equipment has for block and protect and armor although I do have quite a bit it matters that the the blue skills next to it this part down here in the bottom benefits your class uh, fire resistance block recovery stun recovery life regeneration uh, this one does more damage mana regeneration rate uh, this is a level 22 amulet and it's, um, I probably should have let it go a while ago since I am rapidly approaching 50. But so far it's the best one I've found. Like I said, I don't really understand how trading works. I'm going to read up on that a little more and see how to make that go. I understand it's, uh, there's a POE trade you can listen in on and it people announce things but without having a firm idea of a build in mind uh, I'm not really sure what I want so I need to look up gear to find and if you control click it'll put it in your inventory automatically so basically transfers it without you having to do this every time manually so that's all I can fit in my chest and that's okay one thing I wish they had was I wish they had an auto sort uh, I'm pretty sure Diablo had that I don't know it might I just may not know it Eh, whatever doesn't matter so this game has a number of interesting inbuilt crafting recipes and scrolls of wisdom identify things so I think it works I think us, I have enough and we help you so I've got these four portal scrolls We're already up 40 portal scrolls I don't use them very often so I want to trade them in so I trade these portal scrolls and I can get scrolls of wisdom back which I do use a lot instead of these portal scrolls so it trades me one for one I accept it I look at my inventory and now I've got scrolls of wisdom instead of portal scrolls and since I'm in the process of identifying stuff that was a good benefit for me as you can see the gear is plentiful and definitely has a lot of things to consider all right so I picked up this glorious leather glorious leather we don't have enough decks for this and I'm pretty sure we don't are even close to 124 decks see we're never gonna be able to wear this um, this is the hardest thing for me that I've had to do and I'm, I'm really having a hard time with this because I, I, I keep trying to save gear, save gear, re equip an alt, save gear. You don't want to do that. You get so much gear, Hello. it really doesn't matter. So, we're going to sell this item to a vendor. This is a rare item. It has an evasion rating of 757, so what I've seen so far, that's actually pretty good. So we're going to take this and we're going to drop it in these offers. She's going to give us alteration shards back for this, which means if we get enough of these, we get an orb of alteration, which is currency. Uh, there's no gold, so we don't have to worry about gold coins and other crap. You just have to worry about like 59 different pieces of currency that people will ask for when you buy something. I don't know if that's better or worse, but it it's definitely makes it more interesting. So we got these orbs of alteration, and I don't think we're carrying any, so it's going to drop them straight in our inventory right here. 
So Orb of Alteration does a specific thing to an item, just like this Blacksmith's Weststone. Uh, this improves the quality of a weapon. Is our weapon at max? No, it is not. So let's take our weapon off. And I'm not sure if I can do this with the gems in it or not. I can. So you can see we, we added a gem to our goat's horn. And our quality went up by one. Which means our damage went up a little bit. It didn't really. And the max quality we can get to is 20. So now our damage is going up. You can see 511 instead of 510. And we keep feeding it these things. We're 8%. Believe me, on an actual weapon, these go up much faster. 6 and 11. We're 11 percent, 12 percent, and we'll get more, so we can raise it a little bit more. Put that back. So we also got this crystal wand of regrowth. If you hold down your Alt button, it will compare it to what you have currently. So all this will give me is 31 percent increased spell damage and four life gained per enemy attack. What I currently have gives me 10 life gamed when I kill an ignited enemy. And 10% uh, spell damage. But I get more fire damage. And there's other benefits to this. This has more slots though. Two blue and one red. This only has two blue. So I can put two blue spells in it. Which I have flame dash and faster casting support. It's just sitting in here right now. Uh, they're not linked, so they don't tie together, but it's the beginning of my template, basically, of what I want to end up as, and the skills that I want to have. So we're going to get rid of this, because we're going to get another one of those, I'm sure. So I got this uh, Apocalypse Locket Heavy Belt. Which gives us 29 strength, which is way more than the belt we currently have, even though the belt we currently have is... Still pretty decent. Uh, that one gives us 14 energy shield. This one gives us 68 life. 13 increased flask mana recovery rate. And reflects 8 physical damage to melee attackers. I still think we're better off with what we have. Although I am not a pro on figuring this out. That's why we're playing this. So we can learn. So I'll put this in here and I get even more alteration shards. I get one. I throw this in here. Now I'm getting seven. And we got this belt. Which does give us a lot of resists. But I'm still not going to equip it. Because I think we can do better. So hey, anyway, now we got more alteration shards. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this because we've got eight alteration shards here. We're going to get 15. And if we get a stack of 20... It rolls over and becomes an orbital alteration. So the shards, which stacks of 20 become an old orb of alteration, have become an orb of alteration, and we have three more shards. This lets us reforge a magic item with new random properties. So if we had a magic item, that won't work. And I don't think any of the things we have on hand will work. Go grab one of our magic items. Okay, here we go. So, as you can see, this is a magic item. It's got 11%, 11 intelligence and add some cold damage and whatnot. So we take our orb of alteration and we drop it on here. And now we get 40% global critical strike chance and 20% increased mana regeneration rate. Is it better? Uh, at this point, I don't know. I don't use daggers or whatever these Hello. are. So, to me, this is useless. So, we're going to turn it into another alteration shard. So, gear hoarding. Played Diablo for a long time. Got really good at packing all the gear I could into all the little chest nooks and crannies. Like all these little things. And then I realized you get four tabs, and the amount of gear this game spits out, you're going to fill that before you even finish the first act. 
Look at all these right here. These are just the flasks that I picked up. Just the flasks. I'm not sure what the next level is. Anyway, I can show you what happens when you you get these dinky little uh, flasks of life. These are hallowed flasks, so they they yield 1,990 points. So now we go to the vendor. You help us, and we help you. I don't want to purchase. I want to sell. I do not want to purchase. I would like to sell. That was my fault. Okay. So now I want to sell flask. I drop a flask in here. Oh, I'm getting a scroll fragment. Uh, I get five of them. I get scroll of wisdom. I drop a second one down. Ah, uh, two. I drop a third one down. I get the upgraded level of flask that it's going to have. So... Instead of 1990 over 8 seconds, this one cures 1460 over 3 seconds. And it has it uses 15 out of 30 charges every time it's used, whereas these use 10 out of 30. Uh, I'm not sure that's really an upgrade or not, but for me right now it is not an upgrade because I can't use it. But that is how you step your flasks up, so you get more flasks. That work for you and stay level appropriate. Uh, flask, I guess, are worth hanging on to, but they're also worth converting. Uh, you want magic with magic and high quality with high quality, of course. So far, that's what I figured out. Got a lot of rings to get rid of. I got a lot of everything to get rid of. So, question mark or exclamation points over their head means they have something to say to us. Well. She wants us to do a prophecy. See you soon. I don't have any. You spend a silver coin, she tells you your future, some stuff happens, and you sometimes get a bonus, you sometimes don't. I have seen warriors in black in the east. They are from your Oriat. Better fed, better armed than you, exile. Oriat did not want you, so why does it follow you here? You will understand what you see more than I. Go east and find these warriors in black. If there is danger to us, I need to learn of it. So he's like the chieftain of the Boy. village. <laughs> and he, he's not too fond of us. But he just gave us a new quest to go to the Chamber of Sins. Which is uh, over here. So... Gotta do one last thing before we go. We have to assign our skill point. So we got a new skill point. And we're gonna open up our skill tree. And you can see here we've come down here, we've got all this stuff. We've gone up here, we've got all this stuff. This ancestral bond was the skill that helped me the most. Um, I saw this skill and I saw it gave me an additional totem and I knew it was going to be useful. When I played up through it, I actually played as a totem user, so from almost the beginning of the game until then I used just totems. Uh, by the time I got up here, the game got a little hard. I had no other skills to work with. Uh, next league I will probably make my way there directly, but I will also maintain some other skills so that I can defend myself because this takes about 30 points ish to get but basically once you get ancestral bond you can do two totems at the same time but you cannot deal any damage with skills by yourself you are chatting this is so weird you are defenseless except for your totems. And I'm okay with that. So we're going this way because we need more damage and more strength. And more life. So we're working our way 
I think the that what I had was to go through here so we can get this tree this was gonna be my next thing which is gonna give us 14% uh, totem damage 14% totem damage and 30% uh, totem damage so in order to get there we have to follow the path so we have to go up here hit every one of these to get to here but this is where we're going right up to here so we assign our point we accept it and we move on no regrets and like I said this is a learning experience I'm not trying to teach you I'm just playing the game and explaining what I'm doing while I'm doing it uh, chamber of sins look like it came off to the side so it's probably gonna be over here this zone is really cool. It has a lot of lore in it. A lot of things to explore. A lot of skeletons. Something useful dropped. I heard it. Transmutation. Chamber Sins is a dungeon. And we get some things in this dungeon that are fairly important. So it's worth doing. Oh look! Rare skeleton. This guy regens life. So if we stop attacking him, you'll see his life start to go back up once he stops being on fire. There he goes. But, apparently he doesn't like fire. So... That pretty much took care of him. Alright, and we continue. Oh, look. Two rares at once. Status effects that we're currently under. Blues are definitely worth killing because they get more experience. Just drop our totem and keep going. We don't have to kill everything. We're not getting like optimal experience here. Okay. So the exit showed this way, so it's probably usually going to be on this side of the zone. So we ran over towards the leftish side of the zone to find the left side zone wall to find the chamber sins. Zones are randomized, so um, when we go into it, it generates one. It uh, keeps the zone for the Empire was built by sick in minds. ten to fifteen minutes after we leave. But if we hold down the control and click on it, uh, it'll let us know that it's got fifteen minutes left on this instance that we just created. If it, uh, we don't want to do that. Say we want to go back through it and get more loot. We can do a new one, or we can go back into that same one. So if you, you can backtrack if you have to. Or you could just make a new one and go on. Nothing better than uh, setting the whole room on fire. Little spiders. Alright, so this guy Ray's is dead. So we kind of need to light him up as quick as possible. Full worm scale. Our current armor is better. Okay, we got another divinity card, Shard of Fate. I just for uh, reference, I I wanted on my ranger character to get a bow. Uh, you get the bow off of the divinity cards that drop in the first zone in Cruel and maybe Merciless. So I spent about four hours farming the zone over and over and over again. 
And I never even got one of the cards, so... I uh, went to the next zone and got... Like, three of them almost right away. So, um... I'm not sure about farming for Divinity cards. The drop rate seems a little erratic and insanely low. Now this game isn't impo isn't incredibly easy on this character. It still has challenges. There's a lot of strategy I have to do. I have to make sure these guys get taken out. And since he's a heroic, he's he's going to take a little bit of effort. But I need to keep him occupied so I can kill him. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to kill any of the undead in this area. He will just bring them back to life. Black Death. A little spider. Uses Viper Strike and resists lightning. Apparently, it does quite a bit of damage. Considering. Inquisitor. So, there's all these lore items you can find running around here. So, you can hear a little story about it. Uh, one thing that I did find is that if you're in a hurry or you're, you know you might be attacked, if you click on it, Inquisitor. Let it start playing and then click if off you of it. Attempt to transmogrify a virtue gem without the proper mental preparation, you will be a puppet master working strings made of vipers. Remember, these gems are phantasms in crystalline form, alive with volitions inscrutable. Master conscious dreaming, as I instructed you. Your death would mean little to me, Malagaro. It's what your demise could unleash. That concerns me. Malachi. So, that way you can hear the story as you move along. So we're looking at our little mini-map here, just making sure we hit every room. Making sure we go everywhere. Our fire does not hurt us, so we can stand in it all day long. But it, it tears the crap out of most other things. I mean, you can see I'm just kind of wasting this room, these room by room. There's a lot of different armor skins you can pick from. A lot of customization. Who guys. When I was lower level and we had one totem, I would have to cast the spell and then go hide so they'd attack the totem and not me. But my totems do enough damage now that they actually taunt the uh, creatures away from me. Or I could just stand here and let them hit me. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. Not, not in this character's context. And you will get experience. You don't have to stand there. You can you can actually fire them up and walk away. Do a little exploring. Pick stuff up. See what else is in the room before you you get too far, or you can just keep going. Got 
travel skills. You can leap across areas, which is very handy in the uh, trap rooms that come up. There's another breach. I'm really needing some upgrades before I, I do too many more breaches. Since all my gear is self-found and the breach creatures tend to just show up on you. Uh, I heard something moving somewhere. Maybe over here? Yeah. All right, now we can move to level two. I don't remember if there's a boss fight in this one or not, but we'll get to that and then we'll pretty much call it a day because we're already over an hour. Uh, we're playing this is good. Okay, and there is a trial in this area, so we're, we're going to get to go through that. So we're going to see... Uh, see, now this is where our high health comes in. So now we got to chase this guy down. Make sure he's dead. Make sure he's dead. Got a chromatic orb over there to pick up. And our uh, loot filter color codes it so we know what exactly we're looking for. level so let's assign our skill point like I said we're going this way so we got that 5% life so now we need retribution which will give us another 14% spell damage melee damage doesn't matter attack speed 10 strength and intelligence which gives us more damage so we'll take that makes us even more potent Anytime you hear that, spiders are coming. So be ready. They honestly scared the crap out of me the first time. They came storming over the edges. These guys are pretty cool when they die. They get all glittery on the ground. and That's kind of neat. All right, that means there is one of these guys around, so we got to get rid of him. Can't kill anybody else until he's dead. It does not matter. See, leave the room. Portal gets that. Go hide. And take that guy out. He's not really a danger, but and there's a resistant shrine, but I don't need it. We're not having a terrible time with this, so. I think we're pretty okay. The creatures and stuff that attack you are pretty pretty interesting.
All right, there's a boss. That thing, it slaughtered everyone. Help me. Okay, so there's a nasty little creature up here that's gonna attack. All we gotta do is the same thing we do every time. There he is. Right there. And his health is just vanishing. What we really gotta do is get rid of that guy. And he will do what he does. There's all the loot that dropped. None of it is worth looking at. Now I have to go talk to Helena. To damnation with piety. She was after one of Melagaro's creations, the Baleful Gem. It's in here somewhere, and it's something that wicked woman must never get her hands on. You've seen the encampment on top of the dam. Find the Baleful Gem and meet me there. My days with the Ebony Legion are done. Okay, and now she'll appear in town so we can talk to her next time. But there is something we need to pick up here. Get a strange device and pick up the Baleful Gem. Before we leave, and we can... I bequeath this transmutia device to you, Inquisitor Maligaro, in recognition of your devotion to our sublime art. May it be the chariot that conveys your dreams into reality. Malachi, Thaumaturge Laureate to the Empire. Now, the first time I played through this, I did not have a lot of time to sit down and listen to all the dialogues. I also was not aware that you could... Um, play them on the run like that so oh, we gotta get rid of that guy having learned that little trick uh, the game starts to make more sense um, the first time I played through it and I was I was really really struggling with my ranger mainly just due to gear and um, every time I would try to listen to something I would get attacked and I couldn't keep up with it and I couldn't I couldn't stop moving because it was a constant stream of it just dodge and shoot dodge and shoot I uh, could not even take one hit so in the end, I, I just didn't have... I guess we could have gone through that door. I didn't know that was a door. I didn't have the, uh, the skill, and I did not have a chance to listen to a lot of the the dialogue. And it really, the game didn't make as much sense as it went along, and you're meeting all these people, and they're supposed to be like the ultimate evil, and you're supposed to kill them, and I had no idea they were. Uh, having gone through it again with this character, which is a little more tanky, and I can uh, take a moment and listen to the dialogue, the story makes more sense. These people that you're after now make more sense. Why they're so bad. There's just a difference between um, Killing someone because somebody told you they're evil, and killing someone because you you have evidence they're evil. These little statics don't do a whole lot of damage by themselves, but they will stack up and they will eventually wear you out. And same as always, they go down. And you can see we are taking a bit more damage in here. Oh. Got a rare summoner to take out. Um, that was the main problem I had when I was the path to justice is oh. 
The path to justice is slender and perfidious, fraught with missteps of ambition and despair, egotism and doubt. Should you choose this road, beware those who would waylay your hopes and disembowel your dreams. Remain sure and remain true. So, this is the what basically is called the Ascendancy Trial. So, in order to ascend and gain more skills, you need to complete these basic trials that basically just teach you how to navigate traps or how to click in the wrong place because you get lag. So, Basically, it's telling me I've got all these saws that I've got to deal with. I've also got all these levers that I can turn. And they do different things. So I can hit this one, this one, and this one. And... and do a horribly wrong thing because I was not paying attention and talking instead. And they basically stop the saw blades temporarily. Uh, eventually they'll kick back over and, and do it again. And if you stand in them, they will eventually wear you down. going next over here so I have a movement skill that basically teleports me uh, unfortunately the uh, movement skill will walk me to the point where it can teleport me and then teleport me the archers blink arrow does not have that problem we gotta hit that lever so we're aiming for that. And now we can just go this way. And there's a locked door, so now we gotta figure out how to get past this. Okay, we go around this way. Got a couple rares that are going to attack us. Basically, all that is just open that door. And make sure we killed everybody in the room. And then we hit the plaque. There is a fine line between consideration and hesitation. The former is wisdom, the latter is fear. And then we can hit the portal, which takes us back out to the beginning where we came in. Basically takes you out to the door. So trial solved. Uh, it does not update this to say that you have solved it, but if you take the portal out, you've solved the trial. Uh, we could do better on those. Um, I got a little bit of lag for some reason on one of them, and I walked right across the, the saw blade. I'm sure that stings quite a bit. So, I imagine that's something you want to avoid doing as, as often as possible. I think we've explored this place 100%. No, we still got to go down there. So, we will take a moment and check out this area. I just like clearing it all the way. I probably don't have to. There's probably not even anything really worthwhile. Oh, there is. So these frozen guys give um, a thing you can add to a weapon. This muttering anger of essence is going to be like 
this weeping essence of hatred. Uh, upgrades a normal item to rare with one guaranteed property. And the property is restricted to level 60 and below. So if we put it on uh, our armor, we get between 18 and 23% to cold resist as a guaranteed property. Um, so we'll drop our totems. We'll trim these guys down a little bit. Pretty sure that guy's got life regen. Hey, got me. Okay, so there's our muttering essence of anger. He also dropped a Highland blade, and he also dropped full chainmail. Uh, pretty sure that doesn't stack up to what we've got. We'll try to pick it up, and we'll identify it and see. So we'll take our scroll of wisdom and hold down our alt button and we'll see that our armor right now is 293, which exceeds that. And we're not really working a shield build. We're just armored out to teeth. Plus it's way lower level than what we have. Uh, I don't need a sword and I don't have room to carry it. So it becomes irrelevant. However, we can proceed further this way, it looks like. So we see this swirly line, and we know there's a breach around here, even though it does not say there are breaches in the area. Maybe it does if I... It does. The area contains breaches. So there's our breach that we got. Get a scroll of wisdom back. is that. So now we can go back to the portal and go back to town. So basically that is overland gameplay, some tree mechanics and how to add skill points. Um, I kind of showed you the basics of a loot filter and what it, what it trims down and just the difference that it makes and what you see. Uh, and we basically did a kind of a mini dungeon and we did a ascendancy trial. So it, it kind of gave you a good idea of the scope of the game in under an hour and a half. Um, I think I'm going to continue to play this off and on to learn. I'm going to continue to play it, but I'm going to continue to, uh, incorporate my play sessions into, uh, YouTube videos to share with you guys what we're working on here and then we're going to pick up on a more regular basis uh, when the next league starts which will probably be in about two months so this is a uh, investment in the future for learning and as I learn more I will tell you guys more like I said I'm just on the basics right now so um, I'm learning and I'm figuring stuff out and I'll pass those things on to you. If you are watching this and you are a super player of this game, and I know there are a bunch of them, and you, you want to share something, correct me. Whatever you want, by all means, drop it in the comments. I, I have fully admitting that I am not an expert at this game, but uh, I, I'm interested in learning. Um, I'm interested in seeing how it goes. I would like to make it to the next one in Merciless and see how that works out. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I had a horrible cold. And um, we'll continue our progress through this league and see how it goes. Uh, I'd like to do some maps and show you how those work. So um, we'll do some highlights as this league progresses. And... Uh, and then, then we will uh, 
we'll pick it up in more in depth like I said in the next league whenever that starts uh, so if it was December that'll be all through December all through January all through February probably in a March and we'll pick it up which is almost unfortunate because um, there's another game that comes out in March that I'm interested in but I'm interested in this too so choices decisions or maybe we just do them both anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and this brief noobs introduction to Path of Exile. Uh, some of my friends had asked me about it, seen me playing it, and asked me what it was like. I thought I would give a brief introduction to it. Uh, I We will probably, if we finish and get some maps and I want to start a new character, we can, uh, we can go over the basics like we will do at the start of the next league. I will start from scratch and I'll, I'll give you my plan as to what, our, what we're going to do and how we're going to get there and what we're going to we're going to end up and how we're going to self find our way up into uh, a decent position to start a, a kick ass character. Since it's so late in the league I don't think we have an opportunity to do that now. So now this is just learning. But we're all going to learn together and uh, like I said this game is free on Steam. You can download it from the, the Path of Exile website as well, but if you download it from Steam, it stays updated and it's free, so it doesn't really matter. So, um, I highly recommend you check it out, and if you uh, are looking for a game that uh, you can just toy around with all you want and learn new stuff every time you get into it, then uh, this will probably be a good game for you. Just don't get frustrated and don't let it intimidate you. That's that huge skill tree breaks down very easily because if you're looking at I'm a barbarian or I'm a marauder I can either do melee damage or I can do uh, lots of armor and magic and then totems these are all within reasonable reach or I can um, yeah, I can do totems or I can do melee damage I mean, just you just got to look at where you start. See, here's the melee damage and the totem damage and stuff is down this way, I think. Whatever direction you want to go in. There's sword damage, there's axe damage, mace damage. Pick what you want to do and head that way. So if I wanted to use a big mace, I would just walk my way over to here and start picking up some mace damage. Some bone breaking and skull cracking. Once you break it down into that logic, it's not as intimidating. You find the skills that help you within the range of where you're going to be. So uh, you get one point per level, basically, and some quests give you an extra point. Killing all the bandits gives you an extra point. So start a start a marauder, and you you look. Let's look at skills within. Shoot, I hate the way it flips like that. Let me zoom out a little more. Let's look at skills within this group right here. What in here appeals to you? Do you like two-handed melee damage? Do you like one-handed melee damage? Do you want to do spells and move further out? But look ten, ten points out and what what's going to benefit you the most? I mean, when you get to points like this... I could have gone up here and got more fire damage. This ties more into axe and shield. This is mana, and I knew I was getting rid of the mana anyway, so it really didn't matter. So that was what, when I reached this point, that was what made me go this way, because I'm like, okay, totems, i got to get over here. So instead of going up here, I'll continue to go this way. I went up here and I hit this tree. This is um, two-handed melee damage. I have no use for it. I can keep going. But uh, here's some more spell damage. Here's some more elemental resists. There's a jewel socket that I need. So, got to get me a jewel socket. I get three mana and ten elemental resistance, or ten elemental damage increase. And I can actually socket anything in there anytime I want. But I wanted to get up here so I could get that second one. 
I didn't want really more armor and I'm not using power charges so much so this was kind of waste so I just continued across here got this jewel socket which actually is gonna come in handy when I get some real jewels that'll help and went up to ancestral bond and uh, now we're working our way over here and we're gonna get more totem damage so we're gonna pick that one and that one and that one and that one then up here and work our way around so it is a huge tree but if you're only working within like 10, 10 clicks, you could kind of get an idea of what your direction is that you want to go in. You know, do, do I want to come back here and get more armor? Do I, I don't do melee damage, so I don't need, I can ignore this. Elemental damage, but I'd have to go through a whole bunch of stuff I wouldn't use to get to it, and there's easier ways to get to it. Uh, minions I don't have, so I can skip this more minions and this is where the witch comes down from over here to go into minions and zombies and things like that fire damage would be good so I, I technically could go up here and get this but it puts me in a weird location because none of this other stuff does me any good so is there a better place for me to find it you know is there a better place for me to find a skill I'm looking for it's more concentrated in, in my tree over here. So that's that's how you do it. You know, pick your direction. So don't let it intimidate you. You don't need to get every skill. In fact, you're not going to get every skill. Probably going to end up with like 120 points max. Maybe 118. So you just have to pick where, where you want to go. You know, get to a crossroads like this. Oh, that's fire damage. That's good, but that doesn't do me any good, and that doesn't do me any good, and none of this does me any good, so... Oh, wait, this does me good. I'll go over here. Uh, there's a jewel socket. Do I want that? You know, at what point do I want a jewel socket? I can zip over here in two points and get another jewel socket. Um, this doesn't do me any good, but I skip it, but I gotta get up here, so that's the best way to go that way. So kind of an idea where you want to go, but you know, don't don't fret it too much. You get respects that you can take back your uh, skill points too. So I could refund eight. Say I went this way for eight and realized, oh shoot, I was wrong. I was looking at the wrong line. Say I did this one instead. I wasn't paying attention. Well, I could back it up eight, and then I can get more. They're fairly easy to get and back it out but you know it does get kind of expensive but every orb of regret that you get you can back out one skill point so don't worry it's not permanent but it's a one for one so I can refund eight points I can't refund my skill tree eight times but so do use a little caution with what you pick but uh, it's not impossible to undo a mistake uh, what is impossible is overcoming gear that is not suited for what you're trying to do. Uh, if you can't push the skills to make the skills work, you're not going to uh, to enjoy your time, which is what my ranger was doing for me. But I do remember the first time I opened this, the first thing I said was, holy crap. Would you look at that? That is huge. I mean, what what in the world am I going to do? I don't understand any of this stuff. It'll come to you. Don't worry. I mean, it, it'll, it'll come to you. I got rid of all my mana. I used my life for skills, for everything basically now. So I had to invest in things that gave me more life. Now I got a bunch of life, and now I can continue to work on getting more life, but I don't have to worry about dying. So pick what you want to end up as. You know, there's plenty of um, configurators you could test this with. Anyway, I already meant to end this about uh, ten minutes ago, so uh, I'm out for this time. Uh, this is the first episode. There'll probably be more. 
I don't know if I'll record every attempt, but we'll see. I mean, you guys might enjoy watching some of this. Uh, uh, some of my friends had mentioned it, like I said. Wanted to see it played, so we did some playing, we did some other stuff, we did some crafting, we did some selling. Uh, pretty much did all the basics of the game. And, like I said, I'm no pro. I'm just learning. So we're going to learn together if I do play it. And, uh, I can always stream this. We'll try that, but I wanted to see how it recorded. So we're, uh, we're giving it a, giving it a whirl. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys next time. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. I'll continue to post them if you didn't really like it. Um, maybe something else that I'm doing will make you happy. But, uh, one of the key things I wanted to do is put out some of these videos so when we do start the next season, if anybody does want to watch a full season, they already are aware that I'm doing the content and what my goal is. So, anyway, talk to you guys later. See ya. Have a good night.